Uh, thank you, Pai Iwan. Uh, this is a very good question. And, uh, you know, recently, uh, two years ago, there was this uh, news article about an island in the Pacific Ocean uh, where they found, uh, you know, thousands of toothbrushes, plastic toothbrushes that yeah. had probably Indonesia and found its way onto the beach. Uh, one of the you know, there are many big issues, but one of the big uh, issues these days is sustainability uh, from an ecological front, on many fronts. You have carbon dioxide, you have global warming, you have increased amount of methane in the atmosphere, and you have uh, plastic uh, pollution. Uh, there, there is a lot of uh, plastic pollution of food chains. Uh, including in the ocean. There are microplastics that are found even in the deepest part of the Pacific Ocean. And, uh, you know, most of us eat plastic because the microplastics, uh, probably about at least one credit card worth of microplastics we eat every year. If you consume seafood, maybe you consume two credit cards worth of microplastics. And this is dangerous because at this stage, we don't even know what the long-term impact of this is on health, human health, and in the health of our biodiversity uh, in the sea and on land. So this is a dangerous thing. Uh, historically, we were not aware of the risk posed by this kind of packaging. So, you know, uh, the interesting thing, if you, you look at it, uh, you know, let's look at it from, from two kind of dimensions. One, you know, I, as you know, uh, I teach sustainability uh, in uh, the Indian School of Business, which is where I teach, and in London Business School. So one of the subjects I teach is sustainability. Uh, we are now here, uh, so normally when you look at sustainability, you can divide your universe, your scope into three scopes. Scope one is what you control directly, what is in your factory, yeah? in your own perusaan, your own fabric, you control that. Scope two is what is upstream, what your suppliers are giving you. And there you have some influence. You can influence them, do things like this, don't do things like that, and so on. And scope three is what happens after you have sold it. Mm -hmm. After you have sold it, then what do customers do? What do end consumers do? How do they recycle the product? How do they use it? How do they throw away, dispose of the waste? So yeah. There are three scopes. And across many industries, the estimate is that scope three, which is after you have sold the product, yeah. actually actually accounts for something like 90, 90, 90%, similar and blue percent, the Siluru greenhouse gas emission and ecological impact across total value chain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, come on, Diane. What can we do about it? That is the question. Yeah. So, of course, we have to work on all three scopes at the same time. So, the, the traditional formula is the reduce, reuse, recycle, the three R's formula. Yeah. R, 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 reduce, reuse, recycle. So, in, in this, uh, in the context specifically that you are asking about uh, plastic packaging, uh, the first question to ask is, uh, it, can we set up some kind of a program to actually have a reverse logistic supply chain where we collect these plastics and find some way to reprocess them? That's the first question to ask. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, are some, there are some companies. I have seen some companies, even in India, I have seen some companies that are collecting used shampoo bottles and they are reprocessing them into virgin plastic. Yeah. yeah. And they in their factory, which there's zero water emissions and is completely circular design, they get virgin plastic, which they sell for uh, you know, shampoo companies to make again fresh bottles. That there, there is a there is a methodology available. But the, the catch is this. The catch is this. If the plastic material that you are using is composed of a multi-layer composite, 
yes, that is yes. aluminium and poly layers, mm. then it is virtually impossible to separate those layers because they need to be processed differently. The mm. conditions for processing the alu or the PET or the OPP is completely different. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the, this has to be addressed in two sets. One, how do you set up the reverse logistics? That's the first part. But the second question to ask is, can you move away from multi-layer plastic packaging in sachets to single-layer plastic packaging in sachets? What is the impact? The reason people went to multi-layer plastic packaging is because they wanted long shelf life. And yeah. if you want a shelf life of two years, then you have to use aluminum foil to be an oxygen barrier, to be a moisture barrier. Then you use the plastic to give you the machinability and the flexibility and the printing. So you have to use a composite. And this was yesterday's reality. But today, with modern kind of information systems, technologies available to control your supply chain, to forecast demand, to anticipate demand, to produce just in time, you have to ask, why do I need to have two years shelf life? Can I manage with a shelf life that is only six months? Yeah. And if you can, then you can, in the composite, you can remove the alu foil. Now, we did this with the case of Milo, Milo sachet. We were able to reduce the shelf life from two years down to six months. We took out the alu foil. So therefore, it was single layer and easy to reprocess. In this process, we saved cost, which is good. Uh, but also, it made the whole reprocessability simpler. So today, one low-hanging fruit for companies is to redesign your packaging and redesign your whole supply chain so that you can have reverse logistics where you can reprocess the product. Yeah. So redesign value chain, redesign packaging, and set up reverse logic, reverse uh, supply chain. So three steps. Then one more thing that people have to do is to ask the question, why do I need the packaging material at all? You know, today already in the US, uh, in Europe, you yeah. see the rise of what they call naked stores. Yeah, Maksudnya, uh -huh. naked stores, Zalamini, there is the, uh, uh, a product, product without any packaging. So you go in and you buy the product, but not the packaging. So, for example, why can you have a system that you take your own bottle to the retail store and you fill it with cooking oil? Take your own bottle, you fill it with shampoo. Or take your own uh, box and you fill it with coffee or uh, milk powder or something. So these companies have to innovate and work in partnership with the retailers to see if they can create dispensing mechanisms yeah. whereby you can completely remove the packaging. Of course, this comes with challenges. How do you prevent counterfeit? How do you present your brand, protect your brand? How do you ensure that the quality is intact at the point of dispensation up to the point of consumption? Because once the consumer has got the product with no packaging material, then he, she has to understand that you have to consume it within maybe uh, 10 weeks of purchase, no more. And you have to keep it in a cold place, a cool place where there are no insects and there is less chance of contamination. So it calls for a lot of re-education. It is possible. It starts with the business owning scope one and scope two. And then for scope three, sustainability by design with all these steps I outlined where you work with the consumers mm -hmm. to change their behavior to create a value chain that is sustainable by design. Yeah. So Junga. seen in India already 
uh, like in Switzerland, uh, you know, which is where we live, I have seen in, in India already a lot of municipalities are starting segregation of garbage, which means in the household level, consumers already segregate what is compostable, what is to be burnt, and what is recyclable. So glass is separate, metals is separate, aluminum. So they already do the separation. If there's a packaging, they take the metal packaging, they put it in one bin, they take the glass, they put it in a different bin. So glass is fully recyclable. Metal is fully recyclable. But by segregating at source, you start to make easy the process of recycling. Mm. Even segregating at source, however, will not solve the problem of multi-layer packaging. You can, I can separate plastic, multi-layer packaging. I can put it into a different bit, which is what we are doing today. In India, many cities have started doing this. Many cities have started mm. doing this. Many cities. And, and they have banned the use of single-use plastic packaging. So single-use sachet carry bag has been banned across India. So, but the problem with that multi-layer plastic packaging, even I segregate it, eventually the municipality can only do one thing. Either they burn it in a furnace or mm -hmm. they put it in a uh, landfill. Mm -hmm. So that solution is partial. Eventually, I think, we, society, companies, have to use our heads to even there make it sustainable by design. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Right? Now, another very good uh, thing that we have, uh, see, uh, that we are doing, I'm on the board, as you know, of Delphi, Delphi Chocolates. You know, in uh, so Silver Queen and all these products. I'm on the board of this company in Singapore. So oh, we I... have this company has launched a whole range of premium chocolates, uh, Mereknya Van Houten. Yeah, you know I... this brand, right? Van Houten, and it's yeah. new new products. Uh, you know, really excellent quality cocoa and uh, the right kind of fats and low sugar content. So wellness oriented. The packaging for Van Houten, we have completely removed the plastic and they're going to wax coated paper. Wax coated paper. I Hello, wax coated paper. This is biodegradable. It it's has like lower shelf life. Lower shelf life. So you have to manage the supply chain tightly. But once eventually in sustainable by design, when the consumer disposes of the, the, the uh, paper, it is biodegradable because it's paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? In fact, yeah, in fact, we are, uh, so we have designed our first full-time only sustainability program for three days. Uh, right. will be launched on uh, January 26, 27, 28. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tigari, uh, three different professors talking of sustainability from three different angles. So it's our first, uh, first full-time sustainability program and it has gotten some good interest.
Enchant